This is where mindfulness comes into play. Mindfulness is not about being concerned with what has already happened or what hasn't happened yet. It's not about stopping all negative thoughts because that's not realistic. It's about acknowledging them and then releasing them. They don't control or define us. We have the power over how much we want to focus on a random thought or an event. Mindfulness is about learning how to watch these random thoughts float by without attachment or judgment and being kind to ourselves. There are more than 6,000 scientific studies showing the benefits of practicing mindfulness, including physical health, mental health, academics, athletics, focus, and more. Some people think that mindfulness is sitting there with your eyes closed and your, your legs crossed and your fingers and hands in the okay position, but that's not what it is at all. There are hundreds of different practices and what might resonate with you might not resonate with another. And that's okay because we don't know what we'll, what we'll gravitate towards until we try them. There are positive affirmations to help with self-esteem, visualizations, listening exercises, compassion practices, and more. What I like to make sure people understand is that most of these practices can be done in under five minutes, and no one even has to know that you're doing them. So I invite everyone at home and everyone, the few people that are here right now, to join me in a quick practice. If you feel comfortable, you may close your eyes or just look down at a spot in front of you. I want you to picture a movie screen. And I want you to fill it with all of the things that are stressing you out lately. Things that overwhelm you. Things that make you sad or angry. Now watch as these stressful, random thoughts are appearing on your screen. I want you to notice how your body feels. How your heart feels how your mind feels. Is your breathing fast or is it slow? Are your shoulders up to your ears? Are your muscles tense? Now take a second, and I want you to clear that movie screen. Watch as those stressors float away. And now fill that, fill that movie screen with all of the things that make you happy. It could be a family member, it could be a friend, a sport or a hobby, a pet, a song, just something that makes you laugh and smile. Now I want, to, I want you to notice how your body feels again. Is your breathing slower? Are your shoulders less tension? Now as you look at this movie screen of things that make you happy, notice how your body feels again, your mind, your heart. If we can become self-aware of what we're feeling, then we can learn how to better respond to our emotions. If you haven't opened your eyes yet or looked up, you may do so right now, please. If you had random thoughts during that exercise, that is actually completely normal. In fact, we each have over 50,000 random thoughts a day. We just need to learn not to give power to that negative loop in our heads. The goal is to simply just focus on something other than our negative and random thoughts. And if our mind wanders, learning how to bring it back. If we listen to a song and focused on just one thing, it could be the guitar or the drums, and our random thoughts went down from 500 on day one to 499 on day two, then that's progress. The trick is to begin again. Every opportunity is a new moment to begin again. Mindfulness and SEL don't demand we be happy 100% of the time. They help us get to a more positive place, or at least to a neutral place. When my grandpa passed away of cancer last year during COVID, I told her that it was really difficult for me. I went into a period of deep sadness. It was difficult for my family and my friends as well. There were times that I really wished that I could talk to him, like when writing and practicing the speech, for example. 
But what I didn't tell you was one of the lessons that he told me right before he passed. One time towards the end of his battle with cancer, he sat me down outside and he took out his phone which had his notes on it. And he started talking to me about driving tips. And I asked him, Grandpa, why are you talking to me about this? And he said, I want to make sure that we get the chance to talk about something that would be such a big part of my life. He also talked to me about his favorite movies, Broadway shows, songs, comedians, and TV shows. I asked Grandpa how he could be so positive right now with everything going on with his cancer. And he said, well, to be honest, I've tried getting to positive. I've always been known for my optimism and my positive attitude. But that doesn't mean being blind to realities. So I decided to get to neutral. This was a poignant lesson for me because it helped me realize that there is something between negative and positive. It's neutral. And to me, that's balance. We don't have to be happy 100% of the time. We can feel our feelings and learn to cope with them. I know Grandpa couldn't have been happy for what was going on in his life, but he got to a place of acceptance for what he couldn't change and gratitude for the life that he had and for the moment that we were spending together.